All right, guys, this is Young Link Jr. So updated news right now. So Ethan Crumley's parents has been arrested in Detroit early this morning around 1.45 a.m. So they found him at an 1100 uh, block of Belleville Street. That's near E. Lafayette. That's in uh, downtown, downtown Detroit. And that's actually not too far from Belle Isle, okay? A few miles from north of Belle Isle. And yeah, they were actually in a building. Now, uh, it was a good Samaritan, a good citizen. He What he found out was uh, he found a car that was parked in a parking lot, you know, that wasn't really supposed to be there. And according to the description of the vehicle, um, you know, it was like, it was like a black SUV. And, you know, according to law enforcement, he he noticed like, oh, shoot, this matches what, you know, the people who they was looking for, the suspect. So he ended up calling law enforcement. He took the initiative to do that. And that's when uh, James White, you know, who is the right now is the uh, Detroit police chief. He utilized any type of manpower that he can get to help aid the Oxford um you know, Oxford connection, right, to the shooting. And so um, they ended up arresting them. They don't find them in a building. They was in distress. They were unarmed, luckily. Uh, it was actually SWAT in that particular time, around 12.45 a.m. It was, like, nearby homes and houses there. And so they was, like, checking properties with flashlights and everything of that nature. But the crazy part is when I actually found out, too, um, it was, like, Sean, I think Sean O'Neill, 40 years old, him and his wife, Jocelyn, uh, it was a... Uh, it was probably like I said for lease though, but um, I think he was one of the owners of the property in that particular time, and then the security um, alarm was triggered, you know, and so he thought it was like okay, maybe it was the cops doing their thing, but he ended up uh, taking some action to it, and it was the connection to like oh shoot, you got some intruders there, so that's pretty much how the Ethan Crumley's parents blew their cover, and the crazy part is is that you know I mean they end up you know after you know days after the shooting, they end up leaving the night after the shooting, you know of their son. Um, they end up leaving and they failed to show up for their arraignment and then they wouldn't want to talk to their lawyers so they know they're guilty so they've been charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter now um, they've been shipped up to the Oakland County um, Jail in this particular moment and of course they're going to plead not guilty um, but during this um, when they when they will be convicted they will probably do uh, a lot of time probably life you know in this um, particular situation because I mean you purchasing a Sig Sayer a gun for your son you know, um, of her Christmas gift. And then um, what it was heard is that Ethan Crumbly, when he was online in school, it was evidence that he was online on school shopping and looking for ammunition. And then um, his mother texted him saying, well, your son, I'm proud of you, but just don't get caught, LOL. So, I mean, of course they was encouraging this young man's behavior, but then again, too, they was meeting with authorities, you know, uh, hours later and saying that, oh, they they had a drawing, they came across a drawing that he was uh, shooting uh, a victim. So he must be uh, in distress, something's going on with our son. And then after the shooting, of course, he went home, dad went home and he was like, oh, shoot. He reported like you know the gun was missing and he called 911 but this is a this is a huge mess man um they, somebody said they were trying to pull up ryan laundry like think they wasn't going to get caught yeah of course they was going to get caught man i mean i already knew they wasn't going to get too far so i'm like where are you going to go i mean well you can't go to the airport i mean they definitely going to get caught then i mean they ain't had enough time you know to to, to run away like that i mean what, is, what else they're going to do go to toledo ohio they still going to get caught so uh, i'm just glad that the police department in detroit um, they did everything they could, and uh, they was able to successfully arrest these individuals, and nobody got hurt. So, good thing is they got them alive. I'm glad they didn't off themselves because um, they needed to. They need to be held responsible for their actions. Seriously, man, for neglect, you know, and it's just ridiculous, man, what what the people are going through when the kids had to go through, man, especially in that school. And then you have some copycats too. I think it was a kid in Southfield. Uh, he was thinking about bringing it, brought a gun, and he got arrested for that. I mean, and then. I think it was like Lake, was it? It wasn't Lake Orient. I think it was, it was some school. Oh my goodness, like in a suburban area. But uh, they had to shut the school down. You know, close school down for that one particular day because he was making bomb threats. So once you start doing that, they're really taking that into consideration too because now you're gonna suffer many consequences. That's actually false. Um, when you're making like you know false statements, false threats, yeah, you can do it. That's a twenty-year felony. So, huh, so you probably want to think about that. Think twice before you want to say certain things, you know, um, when it falls into uh, malice. But um, the good thing is I'm glad that they arrested them and they're going to be held accountable. So this is like one of the good news. Um, they, they finally got them, man. And um, yeah, they're no longer in hiding. So the manhunt is over. But yeah, you guys continue to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. This is your boy, Yaleen Jr. I just want to give you that updated news. I'll be back in here again. I'm out. Deuces.